Today is a very exciting day. Um, it is Friday, so it must be Kinetics USA weekly show, Onwards and Upwards. We are very excited today as we have an IELTS bonus class, which is going to be uh, held by Erwin. We're going to have introductions soon. Um, and um, we are very excited to get started. I am checking in today from the UAE. So this is from my hotel room and um, I've met so many nurses here in the UAE and just so excited to be here and to be able to share today's event with you. Um, I want to welcome my guest, Irvin. Hi, hi, Irvin. Welcome. Hello, everyone. Good evening from the Philippines. Good afternoon Yay. to the people of Middle East. <laughs> welcome to everybody who's watching all over the world. I also want to welcome Grace. Welcome, Grace. Hi, thank you, Tanya. Hello, everybody. And hi, Irvin. Hi, hi Grace. Hi there. And I see we have people joining us in the chat. We've got Nancy saying hi to Irvin. Jade is saying, hi, Sir Irvin. My connection is very slow. We'll watch this later. Thank you in advance. So, Jade, the good news is that we will have replays on the Kinetics USA website, on our YouTube channel, on the Niners channel, on the Swoosh channel. So uh, there'll be plenty of opportunity for you to watch um, a replay. Venus is saying hi. Welcome to everybody who's watching from all over the world. Today's class is a very special one. Irvin is going to be presenting on writing and reading, which is something that um, I know everybody is uh, very anxious to hear. Um, but before we do that, I thought if Irvin, if you want to just maybe introduce yourself. Hello to all the people worldwide watching our live IELTS show. Thank you, Kinetics USA, for inviting us to do this bonus class for reading and writing. I'm Irvin Neal A. Temporal, the CEO of 9.09er, the leading English review center in the Philippines since 2007. I've been teaching in the last 16 years, and hopefully we're going to have fun for tonight. Okay, welcome, Irvin. And I see we have uh, Vicky's joining from Kenya, Arlen from Kuwait, Sergeant, I hope I've got the name right, and to Mary Antoinette is saying hi, Eldrin is saying hi, everybody. So welcome to everybody. If you're joining us now, we are having a very exciting IELTS bonus class from Irvin from Niners on reading and writing. Um, Grace, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself. Thanks, Tanya. Um, yeah, hi everyone. My name's Grace. I'm oh, academic hey, manager. Hi everybody. And so welcome to everybody. If you're joining us now, we are having a very Sorry, exciting IELTS bonus now. class from Urban Niners. Excuse me, having some noise interfering. Um, Grace, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself. Oh, okay. Hi, Sorry, uh, Sorry, Tanya. Uh, I just yeah, got a little bit of um, noise interference, but yeah. <laughs> great to be here and um, very much looking forward to um, hearing more from Irvin and I can see Stan here as well. Hi Stan. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I'm IELTS teacher and academic manager at Swoosh English and yes, absolutely love hearing all of your stories about the IELTS exam and just good luck everybody who's taking it. Oh, Tanya, I think you're muted now. I am. I was I, I was muting myself because we seem to be having a little bit of noise interference. So I apologize, everybody, um, for that technical hitch. Um, but I wanted to also introduce Stan. Stan, if you want to introduce yourself and welcome. You, you're also on mute, Stan. You, Stan, you're on mute. All right. So I think it's working. I think it's working now. Yes, go ahead. Uh huh. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, my name is Stan. For our lovely viewers who are watching our Facebook page right now, from Kinetics USA, from uh, from people all over the world, my name is Stan, and I'm the admin of Hurricane International IELTS and OET Free Support Group. For those people who would like to practice their speaking skills, their listening, reading, writing, and speaking, this is. The, one of the most amazing opportunity for you to grow and for you to develop to hone your speaking skills. Of, of course, in partnered with Kinetics USA and Niner Review Center as well as Swoosh English. 
Thank you, Stan. And then Stan is really a great example of <laughs> nurses helping nurses. Stan, do you want to share your story before we get started of how you started Harkin? Um, basically, um, I started Harkin when I came back from uh, from the U.S. So that was around um, 2021. So we started a small group. From there, it grows exponentially, and I realized that there should something there is something that should uh, be done uh, from the international community. Since we've got the COVID pandemic going on, and there are a lot of people who are enclosed in a box, and everybody would like to try. Um, or do something. So it is way better for all of us if we will get communicated or if we would communicate with one another. So I started Hurricane with, with people who just kept on believing maybe it's few of those uh, people. And uh, we, we most of them were nurses, of course, uh, together with Sir Bert, which is one of our kinetics family as well. Guillaume Bert is one of the, the, the best examples that I could probably provide. Um, he he did help us a lot um, during those times, the struggles that we had, the things that we need to work with. And of course, we enrolled, I mean, Kinetics USA was there. I mean, um, luckily, I was being selected when I when I went to the U.S. And of course, um, to, to long story short, um, we, we, we gathered and we started the platform with nothing. And right now, we are keep on growing. We are keep on moving. And... Um, I think um, with the help, of course, of Nine Review Center, with Sir Irvin Neil Temporal, and uh, with uh, Sush English, Grace Jose, and Kinetics USA, who are always at the background, who's ready to help, who is always uh, uplifting and motivating a lot of uh, test takers around the world. And from there, um, they, they kept on, on growing, keep on practicing. Um, we've seen a lot of uh, passers. We've seen a um, lot of uh, changes. And... Uh, I hope that we kept uh, and continue to be working together with Kinetics USA and Niner as well as Swish English. Thank, thank you, Stan. And, and you really serve as a great example to other nurses who are helping each other with the challenge of the IELTS exam. It's not an easy exam. I've just been in the UAE now. I just met with a whole lot of Kinetics nurses this afternoon. And so many people were talking about the IELTS and what a headache it is and what a stress it is and how much anxiety it costs. I think many nurses worry more about the IELTS than the NCLEX exam. So it's really such a, an amazing opportunity to have the experts here today with us, Irvin, Grace, and Stan, to help those of you who around the world are worrying and stressed about the IELTS. We want this to be a distant memory for you. We want this to be a challenge that you've overcome. Um, and that's what uh, today is all about. So um, again, welcome. Safwat is here in Dubai. Oh, Safwat, I'll be back in Dubai tomorrow. Uh, Asim is from Sudan. Uh, Saeed uh, is asking about my major. I'm not sure that question, Saeed. Um, Funky is from uh, Nigeria. Hussein from Pakistan. Um, Annie from the Philippines. Jet from Qatar. Um, so welcome to everybody if you're joining us now. Um, before Irvin gets started with the uh, class that he's going to be doing on reading and writing, and we're very excited to see uh, and learn from Irvin, um, we are gonna, we've got a very exciting announcement. We are going to be launching, as of today, the Kinetics College. The Kinetics College is a new initiative. It is Kinetics USA live show for global RN education. This is going to be held every Monday um, at 7 a.m. Pacific time. So check the time in your home country, 7 a.m. Pacific time. Check the time in your home country. And the, the, this time slot is dedicated to education. So, Irvin, what can somebody expect when they are joining the Kinetics College? It's important that they get free information in order for them to pass the required examinations for them to work in the United States of America. So as you can see, Kinetics College features the best IELTS and NCLEX reviewers worldwide. This is totally free of charge, and we are hoping to produce more IELTS and NCLEX passers with the hope of bringing you to the United States. Thank you, Irvin. So let's put up that schedule again of the, the classes that are coming up. Grace, can you tell us what we can expect on the on the 13th? I see Swish is on the 
um, on, on the schedule for the 13th of June. Absolutely, Tanya. I believe that our plan for the 13th of June will be an IELTS speaking class. So many students really do struggle with the speaking and we are going to be here with lots of tips, lots of advice of ways that you can improve your score for IELTS speaking. So I do hope that everyone will join us. We're very excited to, um, to do this with Kinetics and um, yeah, we hope that everyone can benefit from our, from our experience and our advice when it comes to IELTS speaking. Thank you, Grace. And Stan, how is Harkin going to be participating in the Kinetics College? Yeah, what can we uh, say? Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for that uh, beautiful question. So in partner with Kinetics USA, uh, Nairobi Review Center in Swish English, Harkin International plays, uh, will, will play a huge role in this, uh, um, um, this, uh, in this kind of a struggle. We're in, I think, uh, Harkin will be one of their speaking platform. And uh, I, we, we will be offering you guys a um, lot of speaking practices as well in collaboration with Niner and Swoosh English so that you would be able to exponentially see yourself grow uh, as an individual when it comes to your speaking practice because I think that is one of the most uh, hardest things to accomplish. And um, we, we would love to work with you and we would love to see you in a different level um, showing, um, showcasing what you got. And we are so blessed and thankful that Niner and Swoosh English and Kinetics USA are, are really putting a lot of effort in order to bring nurses all over the world to the US. Thank you, Stan. So there are a lot of resources, everybody. We have Niner's involved, Swoosh is involved, uh, Harkin is involved, Aspire is involved, IPASS is involved. We have a lot of different um, resources and that is just the beginning. There is going to be a lot more skills that are taught in the Kinetics College. So please mark your calendars and check in every single week, Mondays at 9 a.m. Pacific time. Check the time in your home country for the Kinetics College. I think we mentioned it, but we're mentioning it again. This is free. This is complimentary. All of these amazing resources have offered to do this free for you because they want to help. We know that the, that the coming to the U.S. is challenging. We know that it is difficult. We know that it is stressful to get through a lot of these educational requirements, but we are here to help. So with that said, um, we're going to toss it over now to Irvin. Uh, Stan, Grace and I are going to be leaving and Irvin is going to be taking the floor and Irvin is going to be taking you through a reading and writing free class. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Tanya. Enjoy. Thanks, Urban. Now, bye bye. Let me share my screen. One moment, please. Mm hmm. I think I need help here. One moment, please. I already prepared my PowerPoint presentation, but something's wrong with my, uh, I'm not sure if it's my laptop or it's my stream yard. Mm -hmm. Share, there you go, from beginning. Let me just look at it on Facebook because from time to time, I have to look at my phone to make sure that everyone can see it. One moment, please. There's just a few gap between StreamYard and Facebook Live. I just have to make sure that everyone sees my PowerPoint presentation. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Sorry, it's my first time to present using StreamYard. I usually use Zoom for my classes. Can you please tell me if you can see my PowerPoint presentation? It seems to me that my slides are not moving. Uh huh.
Okay. I'm trying to move it from one slide to another, but it seems to me that when I'm looking at Facebook Live, the slides don't move. It, it just shows the first slide. It says, go to full screen. Stop sharing. Share slides. Share screen, share screen. Entire screen. It's supposed to be this one. From the beginning. <laughs> okay, I'm just hoping that everyone, well, yes, that's the point. It's tough. I'm trying to move it to the next slide, but it's not moving. Close the program and open again. I tried to close it. Now I've reopened it. Let's see if it's already moving from one slide to another. It's not supposed to be stuck anymore. I hope that the stars will align. There. But it says it has to be in full screen mode. Full screen mode. Yes, it's moving already. Okay, so first things first, let's talk about the writing and reading subjects. Apparently, IELTS is divided into four sections. There is listening, reading, writing, and speaking. Ms. Lashana and I talked about this one, and initially, we agreed to talk about writing and reading for our first class. Well, hopefully, the next time around, we won't be having technical problems. So... In the coming months, we're planning to feature Sir Brian Martin Shawson, our lecturer who got 9.0 in all of the components. And he'll be doing an on-the-spot IELTS writing, both task one and task two. So it's not every day where you have a lecturer who does an on-the-spot IELTS writing. In one of the future sessions, we're planning to feature Sir Philip Edward Aitana, who got 9.0 overall band score, 9.0 in speaking, 9 in reading, 9 in listening, and an 8 in writing. So as you can see, we are not native speakers, but we have taken the examination to establish credibility. Now, Sir Philip will be doing an on-the-spot IELTS speaking. So I'll be asking for topics or questions from the audience, from the participants, and I'll throw the questions at him. So, now, writing is further subdivided into two. Task one is different for academic and general training test takers. Writing task one, if you are going to the United States of America, it has to be the academic module. And that means to say you'll be given a graph, table, diagram, or chart. And based on this, you're supposed to write at least 100 50 words. I understand that nurses who are going to the United States must take the academic module. It's just that we also have general training candidates worldwide who have a different writing task one and for them it's letter writing. So what have I decided to do for tonight? Writing task two essay writing exactly the same for all IELTS examinees worldwide. Apparently, there are four criteria that IELTS examiners will be looking at in your performance. And what are they? The first one is task response. How well did you respond to the question? The second criterion that examiners will be looking at in your writing performance, it's coherence and cohesion. So this is the one that assesses the organization, the flow of your essay. The third and fourth criteria are the ones assessed in both writing and speaking. And what are they? 
The next one, lexical resource in simple words, it's vocabulary. And the last one, grammatical range and accuracy. In 2017, I attended the International Conference on English Language Assessment, and this one took place in Shanghai, China, where I met some of the biggest bosses of a uh, biggest bosses of IELTS in Asia and the world. And what is it that I've learned during that time? That all over the world, a lot of candidates do not get the required band score in writing because of, number one, inappropriate vocabulary, and number two, wrong grammar. Exactly why, in our next slide, I'll be showing you a problematic paragraph. So, this is supposed to be a lecture. It's not supposed to be a monologue. That's why I'd like to encourage the 150 live viewers for tonight to participate in our discussion. So what is it that IELTS examiners expect in your writing output? For vocabulary, number one, the words must be correct. Meaning to say you have to consider the context of the sentence and make sure that the word is used appropriately. Number two, it's not enough that the words are correct. The words must also be varied because if you frequently repeat the words, that is going to invite the examiner to give you a lower mark for lexical resource. Now, the third consideration for vocabulary, you can't be redundant. A lot of people are asking, what's the difference between repetitive and redundant? Repetitive is when you're using exactly the same words. Redundant is when you use the different words in pertaining to exactly the same idea. That is why for tonight, I'll show you this problematic paragraph and I need you to tell me what's wrong with the underlined words. So let's begin with the first line. It says commercial advertisements. Earlier, I have noticed that we have participants or viewers worldwide. There are plenty of you based in Asia, Africa, and Latin America. So guys, I need your audience participation for this free IELTS class to become successful. Will you please tell me using the comments section, what is wrong with commercial advertisements? Hopefully, it's moving already from my Facebook uh, because I'm looking at my phone for the Facebook live session. It seems, yeah, yes, Kenny Bell, that's, actu that's actually my problem. Uh, it's not moving. So what I'm going to do now is just I'll just do it one by one. Share screen. Hopefully the next summer that we're going to do to do this, we won't have any of these problems. Okay, let's try this one if you can see it now. Okay, there you go. I'm seeing it already on my Facebook live uh, session. So commercial advertisements. Lani Caballero Encarnacion, Mariela Bu, Enuria Ezil, Kenny Bell, all of them mentioned that commercial advertisements as a phrase is considered redundant. Why redundant? Because apparently commercials are advertisements. So what are you supposed to do, guys? You don't put them together. You drop either of the two. So in correcting the error, you're supposed to write, the commercial or the advertisement, but you don't put commercial advertisement together. Now, let's move on. It says here, on the boob tube. Before I explain what the error is, will somebody tell me what is boob tube? Again, I need you to use the comment section of our Facebook live session. This is for me to know that you are with me. We have to work together. It is 9.09's duty to teach, but it is your duty to learn. Guys, will you please tell me what is wrong with boob tube? Anyone who can tell me what boob tube is? Okay, Nancy Ching Calderon responded and she said television. 
she's actually correct. It's just that in the IELTS, we do not encourage words that are not easily understood by an average person. That is why people in the academe use the term boob tube or idiot box in pertaining to television. And why is this the case? That is because for most academicians, the more you expose yourselves to television, the more idiot you become. That is because the television does not necessarily present us with the information that we need in order for us to become better people. But sometimes television presents info that's just trivial, meaning to say it's not really the information that will help us to become better people. It's just that not everyone understands boob too. So IELTS examiners prefer that you use television, which is easily understood by an average layman. There has to be clarity in communication in the IELTS. There is no sense when you write and the other person does not understand what you are writing. Now, let's continue. Are ideally designed in order to publicize a particular product in this way. Look at this, guys, the vast plethora of the masses. Before we continue, will someone tell me what is wrong with vast plethora? So far, a lot of people have responded to the previous question. So there is Jackie Calderon, there is Marie Antoinette Cruz, there is Shane Sheen, there is Rujin May Edio, there is Glenda Marie Panopio. There is BPTC Shane. There is Arlene David. Let's move on to vast plethora. Will someone tell me what is wrong with vast plethora? Marielle Bu responded by saying it's redundant. Rose Ann also mentioned it's redundant. Class, look at this one. Plethora is a word that's not understood by everyone. There are plenty of people worldwide with this notion that because IELTS is an English examination, you have to impress the examiner by using fancy words. The problem with this one is there is a possibility that the person reading the essay might not understand if you're trying to use big words. Our goal in IELTS writing is to express, not to impress. So instead of using vast plethora, what does 9.09er suggest? Based on what I have learned from more than 20 examiners I have met in my lifetime ever since I started attending writing workshops of exam that were conducted by examiners, they would rather you settle for something that's easily understandable like the overwhelming number of the masses. That's more like it in the IELTS. Now, let's continue. Are made knowledgeable in the different facets of a particular product for consumption. Notice that I highlighted particular product. Why? Because exactly the same words appeared in the previous sentence. If you go back to the third line of this slide, it says publicize a particular product. It's just that if you look at the second sentence, exactly the same words were used, particular product. So what is the suggestion of IELTS examiners? You have to do everything in your capacity to replace the words without using exactly the same terms. So may I ask the attendees for tonight, let us replace particular product. Will you please give me alternative terms for particular product? I'm just waiting for the others to finish typing, knowing that there is a three-second delay from Zoom or StreamYard when it's shared on Facebook. Anyone here who would like to replace particular product? Hello to the 168 live viewers that we have. Anyone who would like? Okay. Amarachi Echewada. Thank you very much. Specific item for consumption. So I'm glad that Amarachi gave that as an example. So moving forward, we have to, we have to avoid particular product. We also need to avoid specific item. That's because we already used it in the second sentence. Now, let's see 
if you can see the next slide, because if not, I'm going to do what I have done in the last few minutes. I will stop sharing and then I'll. Oh, guess what? Technology now is cooperating with me. Let's move on. Through advertisements, we are made aware of the existence of manufactured artifacts. Ladies and gentlemen, using the comment section, will you please tell me what is the meaning of the word artifact? At the back of the mind of the writer, maybe he was looking for words to replace product or item. The problem is the word artifact is not acceptable as an alternative because in the first place, artifact is not synony synonymous to product or item. Let's take a look. So far, there have been suggestions from other attendees to replace particular product. Thank you, Regine, for using the word certain. Thank you, Pedro, for using the word certain. Now, I have someone who just responded to the question. It's Heirene Elise Cobello. Yes, artifact is more of a relic. Usually, where do we find artifacts? In museums, exhibits, galleries. It's just that you do not manufacture artifacts. Usually, what do you do with them? You discover artifacts. If we are done with the word product, we're finished with the word item. Let us think of something to replace the word product and item and make sure that the word is appropriate in the context of this sentence. Thank you so much, Kenneth Espiritu. That is an acceptable way of replacing product. So the suggestion of Kenneth, goods. We have another suggestion. This one is from Catherine Ibanez Lapa, commodity. Very good, Kenneth. Very good, Catherine, for providing alternatives to the word product. So, so far, what have we used? Product, item, and this time, either good, goods or commodity, as suggested by the live viewers. Now, let's move on. Look at this one. Innumerable recompenses and remunerations in our diurnal lives. Wow. This one is something that we don't get to encounter in our day-to-day -day conversation. How you write in IELTS, how you speak in IELTS must resemble how you communicate in real life. Because what is IELTS assessing? Our ability to listen, read, write, and speak in casual conversations while we are maintaining an academic tone. One by one, let's take a look at these words. What is the meaning of innumerable? The root word here is numeral. Now, if you put the suffix able, that means to say it's something we can count. Now, if you put the prefix in before numerable, it's the other way around, right? It means to say something you cannot count. Therefore, another term for innumerable is Plenty. Now, let's move on. What about the word recompense? Compense is synonymous to compensation or salary. Looking at the next underlined word, it says remuneration. The problem, though, there is no such thing as remuneration. Using the chat box, will you please tell me now what is the correct word in English? It's not remuneration, but it's supposed to be what? Let's wait for the 156 live viewers to respond. For those who joined us just now, what you're seeing here is an example of a wrong paragraph. So the problems, the underlined words, the issues have something to do with inappropriate vocabulary. So the error could be, number one, the word is wrong. Number two, the word is repetitive. Or number three, the word is redundant. Thank you so much, Edric Dejarme, Nahan Fable, and Myra Vera. You guys are correct. There is no such thing as remuneration. It's supposed to be remuneration. Correct. Now, 
Look at recompense and remuneration. They are related to each other. So another error that IELTS examiners worldwide have noticed, a lot of people use several terms in pertaining to exactly the same idea, but in the end, they end up to be redundant. If I were you, stick to either of the two. Use the term compensation or salary without putting the two of them together. Now let's take a look at the next underlined phrase. Everyone understands the word lives, but what about diurnal? Look at the root word, day, diary, journal. So in this context, diurnal lives must be replaced with something like daily lives. Because there are several errors in this sentence, let's go back to the top of that sentence. So now, guys, how are we supposed to correct this one? Through advertisements, we are made aware of the existence of manufactured goods and of their countless benefits to our daily lives. That's how you're supposed to write in the IELTS. Now, let's move on. Advertisers who are engaged by manufacturers are tasked to configure TV ads. One moment, please. Before we look for the correct word, will someone tell me when do we usually use the word configure? To configure is to find out something that is wrong. In this case, we do not configure TV ads. Why is it that when watching television shows or movies, there is such thing as executive producer? We have production managers, and production assistants at the same time. That is because the ideal word when dealing with TV shows, movies, and ads is produce. So we cross out the word configure and we replace it with produce. Let's continue. Produce TV ads that will vividly parade the pleasant points. I understand that when you use the word parade, it means to say you are introducing something to the people around you or to the audience. But if you look at this sentence, the word parade might be inappropriate. It's out of context. So the suggestion of IELTS examiners is to stick to words that are easily understood. So in this case, that will vividly show or highlight. Let's move on. While I read this one, I need you to think of the meaning of the word in vagal. Let's continue. The pleasant points of products in order to inveigle potential customers to purchase. Guys, the word inveigle is something that we don't use regularly. Say, for instance, when you go to McDonald's or you go to KFC, the cashier is not going to tell you, oh, excuse me, sir or ma'am, I'm going to inveigle you to upgrade your fries and drinks. Having said that, the word inveigle is something that we need to avoid in the IELTS because it does not contribute to clarity in communication. More often than not, it causes what? Misunderstanding or confusion. So now, Using the chat box, will you please tell me what is a better term for inveigle? Okay. Jing, Espin, NCN used the term lure. I think Jing is correct. Here's another suggestion, this time from James Nixon. A chat. Very good. It's more appropriate in the context of this sentence. Christopher Domingo recommended catch the attention off. Perfect. This one is from Nahan Fable, a trap. Kenny Bell, to influence or to encourage. Hannah said persuade. Edric used the term entice. You know what, guys? All of you are correct. All of those are better alternatives, so kindly avoid the word inveigal, but you may settle for it. persuade, encourage, attract, entice, lure, and so on. Now, let us move on to the next slide.
It says here, one good example of this technique is by enlisting the aid. Guys, may I ask you, when do we use the term enlist? Apparently, there are two, uh, two possible contexts of the word enlist. Number one is to enroll. Say, for instance, you enroll in a course or you're going to list down. In this case, you do not enlist the aid. Usually, what do we do? We ask for the aid. So avoid enlist. I'd rather that you go for ask. Looking at the next highlighted word, prevalent celebrities. The moment I hear the word prevalent, what enters my mind is that something, well, it can be compared to a communicable disease, right? In this case, what is the best adjective or best descriptive word to be used in dealing with celebrities? Okay. James Nixon said famous. That is correct. So famous celebrities better than prevalent celebrities. Moving on to the next underlined word, sanction. Guys, what is the meaning of the word sanction? Usually, we use this term when we want to impose punishment on something. Say, for instance, we sanction the citizens who are non-law abiding, the violators, so to speak. It's just that celebrities do not sanction products. In the first place, products do not have life, so they won't feel any punishment. Most of the time, what is it that celebrities do? What is it that celebrities do? Okay, thank you, SGRT and RINS. They promote. That's right. Looking at the next underlined term, it's products. But wait a minute, we're done with the word product, right? So far, what are the suggestions? Earlier, we used the terms item, goods. The word commodity was also suggested by your classmate. So if it was if the word goods was used earlier, then now is a perfect time for us to replace to use the word commodity. So once again, one good example of this technique is by asking for the aid of famous celebrities to promote such commodities. Let's now move on to the last sentence. People who venerate them. Guys, may I ask you, when do we usually hear the term venerate? Definitely, we don't use the term venerate in pertaining to people. Most of the time, the word venerate is used in the context of what? When do we use venerate? When you're dealing with the saints, the gods. People as they are, we cannot venerate celebrities. So what do we do with celebrities? Maybe we just admire them or we idolize them, but we do not venerate. Thank you, Christopher Domingo, for pointing out that the word venerate is used with saints. Same thing for Hannah Flores. You idolize something. Now, what do we do with celebrities? We admire them. We idolize them, but definitely we do not venerate them. Now, let's move on. Would automatically hanker after the same products. Hanker. It's such a pity that it took you five minutes to think of the word hanker. It's just that your hanker is wrong. You could have used those five minutes in thinking of a different word instead. So what could be a better alternative here? People who admire them would automatically go after the same products. So now, ladies and gentlemen, we are done with product, item, goods, commodities. 
Anything else that you'd like to suggest to replace the word product? We still have more than 140 live viewers for tonight. Another term, perhaps, aside from product. Okay, merchandise. Thank you so much, Kathy Kogana. Thank you, Catherine Ibanya Slapa, for giving exactly the same term as an alternative to product. So for tonight, we have learned four other words that we can use in our output to avoid using the word product the second time around. And what are those? Item, goods, merchandise, and commodities. Let's continue. That these celebrities are sanctioning. The word celebrities here is used correctly. The only problem, it's repetitive. If you go back to the same paragraph, the previous sentence, the word celebrities, was used already. This time around, let's think of something different to replace celebrities. Why not use something like these personalities or these endorsers? Now, the last word, sanctioning. Remember, it was used in the previous sentence. It's just that that one was used incorrectly. Unfortunately, it was repeated in exactly the same product and still it's wrong. So earlier, if we used the word promote, this time around, why not go for something like endorse? So what I have shown you guys is an example of a problematic paragraph highlighting errors pertaining to vocabulary. Now for our next slide, what we're going to do is to look at a problematic paragraph, but this time around, we're going to focus on grammatical errors. So for our grammatical errors, Okay, what I want you to do now is to put yourselves in the position of your coaches to identify the error and correct the error. So guys, here we go. Literacy is fundamental for learning at school. Apparently, preposition is a common area of difficulty. A lot of people have problems in dealing with in, at, on, by, with, to, for, from, and so on. So now, using the comment section of our Facebook Live session, will you please replace the word at? What is the proper preposition for us to use instead of at? So while you're thinking in, at, on, we usually use the word on when you're pertaining to a street, avenue, road, or highway. What about in? We use the word in most of the time when pertaining to a place with a defined territory. Say, for instance, a town, county, municipality, city, province, state, region, country, continent. We use the word at when we are pertaining to a very specific address. So if this is the case, we cannot use the word on because it's not a street or avenue or road or highway that we are dealing with. At the same time, we cannot use the word at because there is no specific address provided. In this case, the ideal word to use is in. Correct. Now, let's move on. The next error has something to do with preposition once again. So while I read this one, kindly use the comment section. Let's replace the word in with the correct preposition. It has an impact blank. Kindly fill in the blank. What is the proper preposition for us to use instead of in? Kenny said at. What about the others? Impact blank. Okay, Joe said on. What about the others? Is it impact two? Is it impact with? Impact four? Zane responded on. 
Christopher recommended two. Joanna said on. Amarachi said on. Ladies and gentlemen, it has an impact on. Instead of learning big words, what I need you to do is to make sure that you know which preposition to use correctly. Why? In IELTS, we go for accuracy more than anything else. If you are accurate, that's when you move to the next level. That's when you learn the fancy words or the uncommon words. But I always go back to the fundamentals and basics. You cannot move on to the next level if you are not familiar with the basics. So let's go for accuracy first before you even try to use big words. Let's continue. Impact on an individual's ability to participating. While I explain the error, I need you to tell me the correct form of the word that we are supposed to use in this sentence. Two is always followed by the simple form of the verb. That's why you do not write to participated. You do not write to participating. It has to be what? To, to participate. Thank you so much, Hannah Flores. Moving on. To participate in society and to understand important public issues. For our next sentence, it starts with the word end. Before I explain the error, will you please tell me the word end belongs to which part of speech? Is end a noun, a pronoun, a verb, an adjective, an adverb, a conjunction, or a preposition? Once again, the word end is highlighted because it's not in its proper place. So before I explain the error, will you please tell me the word and belongs to which part of speech? Is it a noun, a pronoun, a verb, an adjective, an adverb, a conjunction, or a preposition? Okay, we already have the correct answer, and this one is from Pauline May San Felipe. It is a conjunction. The word end is supposed to connect words within a sentence, but it must not be written in the beginning of the sentence. That is why, to correct this sentence, drop the word end. We can use this one in the beginning of an informal sentence, perhaps in speaking, where it's supposed to be casual and conversational. However, in the context of the writing subtest, we must stick to formal tone. Having said that, the word end must appear in the middle, not in the beginning, not in the end of the sentence. Let's continue. It provide. Look at the word provide. This word is in the plural form. But if you go back to the subject, it is in the singular form, right? So what are we supposed to do? It provides. We usually add the letter S to the verb to denote singularity. So, it provides the foundation upon which skills needed in the labor market. The word labor is underlined not because it is wrong. But this is a friendly reminder to all IELTS examinees worldwide. The moment you start with American spelling, it has to be American spelling all throughout. If you start with a British spelling, it has to be British from beginning to end. It is a mortal sin in the IELTS to combine British and American spelling in exactly the same essay. So to give you an idea, in America, it's spelled as L-A-B-O-R. In Britain, it's spelled as L-A-B-O-R. Some people assert that British spelling usually has more letters as compared to American spelling. So I'll give you more examples. Say, for instance, the word program in America is spelled as P-R-O-G-R-A-M. However, in Britain, it's P-R-O-G-R-A-M-M-E. I also need you to know that for the word traveling, American is spelled with one L. For British traveling, it's spelled with the double L. However, 
I'd like to remind everyone that British spelling is not always longer than American spelling. Let's consider the word defense. In America, it's D-E-F-E-N-S-E. -E. But in Britain, it's D-E-F-E-N-C-E. -E. So notice, exactly the same number of letters. It's just that in America, they use letter S, but in Britain, they use the letter C. Or another example, to prove that British spelling is not always longer than American spelling. For the word enroll, E-N-R-O. L, L if it's in America. But outside of America, it's usually enrolled with one L. So we have just debunked that misconception that British spelling is usually longer than American spelling. Let us continue. The next underlined word is is. Now, you know that it's wrong because it's underlined. But Let's replace the word is. What are the alternative words that we can use in replacing the word is? Is it supposed to be has? Is it was? Is it have? Is it had? This is what you're supposed to do when you edit your work. Remember, never submit your output without proofreading the errors. Why? Even the award-winning writers commit mistakes when they are writing. Because to commit a mistake is part of human nature. To err is part of our essence as humans. Moving on, identify the error before you correct it. The problem here, it's not is because the word that you're supposed to use as basis in determining the verb is not market. It's supposed to be skills. That's a problem in English. Why? The word, the subject rather, is not always the word before the linking verb. Sometimes it's over there in the beginning of the sentence. So if our subject here is skills, then it's not supposed to be is, but it's supposed to be are. Moving forward, how are we supposed to rephrase this one? It provides, with the letter S, the foundation upon which skills needed in the labor, L-A-B-O-R, just to make it consistently American from beginning to end, market are built. As I'm looking at the suggestion of the attendees, okay, this is not to take it personally against Joanna, Madonna, Michelle, Annie, Regine, uh, Aura. They used the word was. What is your clue? Everyone go back to the first sentence. It says literacy is fundamental. The word is apparently is in the present tense, which means to say the entire paragraph has to stick to the present tense. Having said that, you cannot use the word was, had, where, because all three of them are in the past tense. You cannot time travel from one tense to another. Well, it's like in real life, right? Past, or rather, present and future can actually be together. Why? That's because your present may still be your future. But in real life, past and present can never be together. Now, now let's move on to the next slide. This one, it says, technology and the science behind it permeate all aspects of our lives. Guys, the rule in English, words in between commas are not part of the subject. So what are you supposed to do? You go back to the word outside of the commas. So technology, that's singular. Permeate, that's plural. So write it this way. Technology permeates. Subject and verb must agree with each other. So technology permeates all aspects of our lives from how we work and communicate to what we shop. Just literally drop the word at and how we pay our bills. The complexity of today's world mean. Guys, what's our subject here? Complexity. Complexity is singular. Therefore, the complexity of today's world means. 
moving on which individuals need to have some level of proficiency in reading, mathematics, and science in order blank. No one says in order for. So now let's correct this error. Let's replace the word for. What is the appropriate preposition? It has to be what? In order. Once again, the complexity of today's world means which individuals need to have some level of proficiency in reading, mathematics, and science in order to, correct, to understand and participate fully in economic and social life. Well, earlier, you have read examples that are flawed. They contain errors and mistakes. But this time around, I'm going to give you a model paragraph. Answering the question, do you agree or disagree with the statement that technology is beneficial to society? In IELTS writing tasks, two the usual types of questions include agree or disagree, discuss both views, open-ended questions, do the advantages outweigh the disadvantages? Now, if this is the question, I have with me here a sample introduction that was contributed by our quadruple niner, Sir Philip Edward Aitana, who got 9.0 overall bad score, 9 in speaking, 9 in reading, 9 in listening, and an 8 in writing. That means to say the sample introduction that I'm showing you guys is worthy of 8.0 in writing. That's because it's the great Sir Philip got when he took the IELTS. Now, may I read the sample introduction for you? The increasing reliance of modern society on the efficiencies brought about by technology has led to the widespread use of gadgets and their incorporation into everyday life. So period. Notice I highlighted the words, the keywords that must be present in the introduction and what are those? There's the word technology, which is the main topic. There's this concept of dependence on gadgets and technology. That's why Philip thought of something different. He used the term widespread use. Now, let's move on to the second sentence. Some of these tools have become so widely used that possessing them has become a necessity to function effectively. Writing tasks to agree or disagree always requires a stand in the introduction. And what is the stand this time? Though there are advantages to this, I believe it does more harm than good to the community. When I met global examiners, they have noticed that majority of the IELTS candidates worldwide, and I'm not just and I'm not pertaining to just the Filipinos, but everyone taking IELTS on earth, more than 50%, majority of the candidates use I agree, I disagree. How will your writing task stand out from the rest if you use exactly the same words that other candidates are capable of using? That's why, in this case, I need you to tell me what is the stand of Philip. Did he agree? Did he disagree? Notice, he mentioned his stand without using the overused words agree and disagree. What is your clue? He wrote, it does more harm. If you go back to the question, is technology beneficial to or technology is beneficial to society, agree or disagree? Because Philip wrote, I believe it does more harm. That means to say, According to him, technology is not beneficial. So he decided to disagree with the statement. Sometimes people are saying, but I think that is wrong because technology is actually beneficial. Ladies and gentlemen, people all over the world, an important lesson that you need to remember in IELTS, so there is no moral judgment whatsoever of your answer. Agree is right, disagree is right. But how will your examiner grade you? Ba this is based on how you explain your side. Why do you agree? Why do you disagree? You need to have sound judgment in reasoning. Okay? Now, yes, you are correct. 
He decided to disagree, but he did not use that same word that's overused by candidates all over the globe. Now, I cannot show you the sample body because this is just supposed to be a, a bonus class. But now, let's take a look at the sample conclusion. If you want to screenshot this one, go ahead by all means for you to have an idea how you're supposed to put an end to your essay in writing task two. So I'll read it first, then go back to the important words and phrases. Here we go. Sample conclusion. In conclusion, the society owes much of its progress to the capabilities given to it by technology. But here's the big but, guys. Communities prosper primarily not by the strength of its tools, but by the passion and ingenuity of those who use them. I assert that a nation that allows its fascination with machines to victimize its men cripples itself with a disability that is ultimately self-destructive. Now, in your own words, I need you to evaluate the quality of Sir Philip Edward Con uh, Aitana's conclusion. What do you think of his conclusion? English-wise, grammar-wise, vocabulary-wise, or ideas-wise. While you are typing your thoughts in describing Sir Philip's sample conclusion, let me go back to what he mentioned in his body. Because like what I've said, this is supposed to be a bonus class. I did not show you the entire thing. In his body, Sir Philip actually highlighted the advantages, the benefits that humanity got from technology. It made our lives easier. It gave us access to quite a lot of things. There is ease, there is convenience, there is comfort. The only problem with technology, the reason why Sir Philip decided to disagree with the task description is because technology is a tool for discrimination. Because let's admit it, not everyone has equal access to technology. Only people who can afford technology have access to it. So instead of helping everyone, technology favors only those who are rich and privileged because they are the only ones who have access to technology. That's why, if we go back to Sir Philip's conclusion, the society, the community, needs to thank technology in all the ways that matter. That's what he wrote in the first two lines. However, there is this emphasis that nations, societies, communities become prosperous, not actually because of technology itself, but because of the people behind the technology, putting premium emphasis on people instead of science and technology per se. So for Sir Philip's conclusion, he said the last sentence, a country that allows its admiration for technology to control the people is actually suicidal or self-destructive in the end. I hope you were able to take a screenshot of that sample conclusion. I need you to read it all over again because this is the kind of English that will allow you to get a high score in the writing subtest in the actual examination. Why? Because number one, the idea is not superficial. It's rather uncommon. Because most of the time, people think that technology is beneficial. But here's what Sir Philip is doing. He presented us with a different view of technology that it's more of discriminating and harmful than an equalizer. Reading Sir Philip's conclusion, he did not use big words just to intimidate the reader. He is using words that are easily understood and presented in a very scholastic tone. Now, as I was told, I am given 45 minutes for this presentation. Well, we started at 10 p.m., but now it's 11.09 p.m. Philippine time. Uh, I actually prepared a presentation for reading, discussing true, false, not giving, and some sample exercises. But I don't think we still have the luxury of time. So 9.09 is supposed to present once again here at Connecticut College on June 27th. So before I move on to the question and answer portion, 
Let's use the next few minutes to solicit ideas from the crowd. Like, number one, what is it that you'd like 9.09er to feature on June 27? Would you like, number one, the discussion of true, false, not given? So that is one option. Number two, would you like to see Sir Brian Martin Shawson make an essay on the spot? Like you provide him with a question and he's going to come up with an essay in front of you guys. Or number three, would you like us to feature Philip Aitana who got nine in speaking? You throw the questions and then he'll answer the questions extemp uh, extemporaneously. Or if you have other suggestions, maybe you want free lessons on grammar or vocabulary, just shoot it. Just use the comments section. Okay, Miss Jennifer is very supportive. I'd like to thank her for being there for all the Connectix nurses. The reason why Connectix is able to produce dozens of passers every single month and sometimes a hundred passers in one month is because Miss Jennifer is always there to respond to the needs of the Connectix nurses worldwide. Even if Miss Jennifer is based in the United States, she communicates with everyone from all continents just to make sure that their preparation is going smoothly. And hopefully, when they take the IELTS, they'll get the required 7 in speaking and 6.5 overall band score in order for them to go to the United States of America. From all the nurses, from all the frontliners uh, front worldwide, a big fat thank you, Miss Jennifer. So, uh, Sir Stan, also known as Marcus Aurelius, said, we actually love all of them. You can do the true false not given session. You can focus on uh, the on the spot writing. You can have the on the spot speaking. So far, we have three votes for number two, one vote for number three. And here's Annie Shasase Morjana Marjana saying thank you and you're welcome. Apart from the Filipinos who are present here tonight, I've also noticed that we have a lot of friends from Latin America and uh, Africa. 9.09er is determined to help you guys in getting the required band scores in the IELTS. That is why for non-Filipinos, I repeat non-Filipinos, you can send me a personal message on my Facebook account and I will schedule a free one-on-one -on -one coaching with our instructors. Like what I have said, we are not native speakers, but we have taken the examination to establish credibility and reliability. Like you guys, we are non-native speakers and we understand the needs of people whose first language is not English. And because of this, we'd like to offer a helping hand, free one-on-one -on -one coaching. So if you are not a Filipino, all you have to do is to message me directly on Facebook so that I'll create a group chat together with my coaches or instructors for you to be given that one-in-a-lifetime opportunity of free one-on-one -on -one coaching in the speaking subtest. So far, do we have anything from the audience? Because I think... It's over time. We started at 10, but now it's already 11, 14 p.m. But I hope that I did not really waste your 60 minutes. I hope you learned something from our presentation tonight. I'm getting thank yous here. You're welcome, guys. So before I end my presentation for tonight, I'd like to thank Miss Milanis, Miss Lashana, Miss Jennifer, Miss Tanya, Miss Lisa, everyone at Kinetics for making this possible. Hopefully, you will also learn more when you attend the other live classes of Kinetics College featuring Swoosh English, Aspire RN, and uh, IPASS Online Academy. Having said that, Thanks for tonight. Uh, I have to sleep because I have face-to-face -face classes tomorrow at Niner P. Campa, España, Manila. This is Irvin Temporal from Manila saying good evening. God bless everyone. Good night.